Central Time. And before we get started, if you would uh, put your uh, devices on airplane mode, it helps with the feedback. Our game plan this evening will have uh, Morgan Burke make an opening statement, and I'll put Coach Higgins uh, for a statement. And we'll go to questions here in the room. Morgan? Great. Well, we, uh, we feel very fortunate and very happy for these seniors and the staff to have the opportunity to play. Probably one of the most historic venues in college football. I think most people grew up watching uh, the Cotton Bowl. It's, it's undergone a, a major renovation to bring it into the 21st century. Uh, as I've learned more about this bowl, I come to find that, uh, that, that the not for profit organization that's been set up is a, is a charity uh, that each year will pick a, a particularly uh, noteworthy cause within the, the Dallas area. And uh, this year's for the homeless, which uh, and it does is great to see a bowl game is trying to contribute back to the, uh, to the community. So being one of five uh, Big Ten schools playing on January 1st, that's the day you're supposed to be playing on bowl games. And uh, we get to lead off today and uh, get them off to a fast start. So uh, we're delighted. And again, on behalf of these seniors and this staff, they, they, uh, when nobody else kind of thought they could get off the map, uh, they found a way to Iowa, found a way to Illinois, found a way to Indiana. We like the W flag flying over the stadium, and that would be our intent coming back on January 1st. Continue to have it flying, Patrick. Yeah, just a quick uh, note, uh, we are overly excited to uh, be invited to uh, Dallas and play in the heart of, uh, heart of Texas game. With these guys next to me, this is the reason why uh, you play the game, and uh, for them, it's going to be a great experience, and we just can't wait to go down there and start the day off with the... Uh, against a quality opponent, and we're going to have such a great time that uh, we're going to have smiles on our faces all the way down, all the way back. Are there questions here in the room? If you just uh, raise your hand, Tanner, I've got a mic to you. You can address your question to any of the four individuals about the bowl game. Just KJ and Robert, just kind of your thoughts on to be able to go to, to, to Dallas and what it means considering what this was in the middle of the season when you didn't even know if you could get to this point. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, we just all had it in our mind that we never doubted and, and we never questioned uh, that the season was going to be a downfall. Uh, I mean, we had a high expectations for ourselves and we didn't come up to it, but we did uh, succeed that we wasn't going to get to a bowl game. A bowl game didn't matter which one, uh, as long as we got to it. Uh, a lot of freshmen and the seniors, uh, they get, the whole team would be happy and, you know, fortunate to do one. It's really just been a blessing, you know, it's been a roller coaster year, it's been kind of crazy, but uh, to be in this uh, opportunity now, it's a blessing. Uh, we kind of got the ball moving a little bit, the three games we won uh, in a row, so hopefully we get the four for the W, and uh, we know we have to put a lot of hard work into practice, and we're getting ready, but uh, like Coach says, we're extremely happy about the bowl game, uh, extremely happy to be in this position. And uh, there's no other way we want to go out but uh, with the win. Uh, this one, yeah, uh, yeah. This one is for uh, yes, the whole panel. Playing a Big 12 school, I mean, we all see them. They're, they're putting up numbers as a quarterback. You want to go out there and get the sling against them as a defensive guy. How I answer you to get out there and kind of stop? Uh, just facing a lot of these quarterbacks in the Big Ten now. Uh, a lot of versatile, uh, just as far as you got guys that can run and pass. And I know we play Big 12. Uh, it, it's going to be a challenge, and. and it's up to the defense to step up and try to hold these guys down to uh, minimum points and you know keep giving our offense the ball and keep giving them the momentum and you know drive down the field. So uh, as a defense, we feel like we can we can match up uh, any any given Saturday, any given day, pretty much. And you know uh, it's up to us to, to set our goals and our mindset to what we want to do. And just offensively, you know, I'm just going to keep listening to Coach Higgins. I'm going to take it one play at a time and get the ball out of my hand. So, uh, <laughs> you know, whoever the opponent is, you know, like you said, you see these crazy numbers coming out of the conference, and uh, that's why I'm excited about playing for one of their conference. So uh, just take it one play at a time and uh, and keep moving the ball. Yeah, for both players, this was significance of playing on New Year's Day. Uh, I think you guys are too old to remember that that used to be the, the big day in college football, but just to have the opportunity to play uh, on the first first day of the new year. Uh, just, uh, again, just getting to a bowl game, uh, we feel that uh, it's going to be a privilege and you know, play any day, uh, it was a, it was like Christmas or any day. So uh, just as far as us, we just got to take control and, and do what we need to do and, and make that day a successful day as far as getting a win. I think it's awesome playing in January. It's something you know, I watched when I was a kid uh, growing up. And uh, just like the Alabama Bowl being in Tampa, 
it was like you know, a January type of game. And uh, the atmosphere normally gets kind of crazy. People get restless and want to watch football. And, uh, you know, when you're kind of beating up on each other the whole time, uh, bowl preparation, you're waiting to pay your opponent. So I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, like I said, ever since I was a kid, I couldn't imagine playing in January. They can get up and have a cup of coffee with Swiss Heart today. Patrick, now that you know the date of your game, you have a pretty loose schedule that you can give us on when you might start practicing sort of what the, the plan is going forward. Sure, yeah. We mapped out a couple of tentative um, schedules last week. So we, are, we have a schedule in place already for this bowl game. We're going to start practice on Tuesday. And then uh, we are going to approximate, uh, have approximately 15 to 16 practices spread out over that period of time. Coach uh, Higgins, I know you've been working with your staff, but your mindset going into this this game, interim head coach, kind of what what are you and your staff doing? Anything different with preparing for this game? We're preparing to win the game as we always do. So really, we're not doing anything different. Uh, it's nice that we get a longer time to prepare because we can watch all the film and we can kind of we can kind of approach it like a spring ball type of deal. Uh, because we have such a long time frame before the game, we can really work on getting back to fundamentals and getting back to basics and then getting the game plan in. We can have the game plan in you know, two weeks ahead of time, which is great. So we get to practice that. But uh, just talking to the guys and the staff, we're really excited. It's a great opportunity for us to go out and to show what all our hard work is and just to, to help the kids have a great experience down in Dallas. What have you been doing the last week to manage the, the program? <laughs> what, have you, what have you been doing this last week to keep uh, things running as smoothly as possible? Uh, just trying to keep the status quo you know, academically. That's, that's the main focus because finals are coming up dead weeks to make sure that the kids are uh, going to class, going to study hall, getting their mentoring in because this is the time of year sometimes we're between the end of your last game and then before final start that sometimes your mind starts to wander. So we made sure that their minds are not going to wander. They're going to be in class, they're going to be in study hall, they're going to meet their mentors uh, so that when we get the academics back on the, uh, the 19th that uh, it's going to be one of the best semesters. Robert, just from an offensive perspective, when you look at the last three games, at least almost 400 yards a game in all of those you know, three consecutive at least 20 points. What was different with Patrick calling the plays and, and why do you think you guys were able to maybe click a little bit more in those last three games? You know, I think there's a lot of different situations. Um, our communication, I think, would be the number one. Um, he's done a great job of getting on me when I need him, you know, to, to straighten me up a little bit, but at the same time, uh, putting in a lot of great situations to get the ball in my hands. Um, we talked about getting a couple players going. Uh, I don't feel like it was just me and Coach Higgins, but a guy like Shaver steps up and you know, runs very strong. And the whole line gelling together. But, uh, you know, the communication, and, uh, you know, he's a very, very organized man. And uh, he's very clean cut on what he wants and what he needs. So uh, that makes it easy as a quarterback to go out there and just kind of swing it around and understand where I can be free in the system at the same time playing within the system to, uh, to get the ball and get first downs. A lot of us talked about last year if we have to go about building the letter more. Can you maybe just talk about the impact of having a strong before we can kind of leave that legacy on the bottom of the next year because we got so many. Yeah, that's a huge deal for me. Um, you know, I I got to start the last four games of the season. An opportunity arose for me and and, and I wanted to make the most of it. And uh and like you know, a guy like KK and and all the other seniors, and you've been with these guys for four years, you know, and, and things got rough, and, you know, the bad times were there for us this year, and uh, we haven't forgot those times, and uh, it's fun to win football games. It's fun to go out there and beat IU by 21 points. Like, that was a fun time. So uh, we want another experience like that. That's what we're looking for. Um, I'm looking to have fun with the younger quarterbacks, Blau and Alfie and the rest of the guys, and then practice and seeing what they're going to do in uh, game-type situations during practice. And just to jump in real quick, just so you guys know, Robert set a school record this year for completion percentage. He has 66.2% completion percentage, and that says a lot to his character, you know, coming back from his injury and all the stuff that he had to go through. And that's a quality performance for a quality man. 
And the other thing I would add is he's a graduate in August, if you like, right? Yeah. And KK graduates in December. So that, that makes it all the more special. Okay. Robert kind of jumped up the other day too with the point in the system that obviously was something that he maybe didn't necessarily do last year at this point. What what has been key with your relationship with him? Is it his just maturation to this point to be able to do what's asked of him and not to do more, or is it something that you're able to pull out of him? Well, I think our relationship is good so we can talk to each other and we kinda of, we kinda of understand because I understand what he likes, you understand what I what I like. So it's a combination of them both going together. Mm -hmm. And then we just kind of pare down what we're going to do in certain situations and we get to practice them more and we get to find out, okay, take your shot here. If not, dump it off. But just make sure we're just trying to stay within the system. We don't need you to win the game. And I think, and Robert related this to me the other day, he says, when I got to, to start full-time and to know that I'm not coming out of the game, you don't have to go in the game and try to make a play every time you're in there. You have the whole game to make that play. So you have time to grow and to mature within the within the concept of the game. So that and I think that helps a lot. Anything else here in the room? I will check on the phone lines. Uh, Pete the Premier, have any questions? Uh, I'm good, thanks, Phil. So. Uh, how about Randy Beard? No, I'm good, too. Mike Mayer? I'm good, too. So. Steve Warden? No problem, thanks, Phil. So. Last call here in the room. All right, thank you all very much.